Okay, so we're going to crack on with our next talk. Uh, we've got Katie Fenn, who's going to be going through debugging in Chrome. Thank you, Katie. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Katie Fenn. I'm going to be talking to you today about debugging your code with Chrome DevTools. Um, a quick content warning to everyone in the room before I start. Um, heavy animation is used frequently in my slides, so if this might make you uncomfortable, um, you might want to uh, uh, go to another presentation. So, um, uh, another thing is that uh, green slides in my talk will contain links and Googleable um, terms to other features that I couldn't quite fit in. Um, so, if you want to follow along, um, my slides are online at this address. Um, go and find out more about those. So this is a talk about debugging. Let's remind ourselves what debugging means. It means to remove bugs or mistakes from a computer program. And we do that by monitoring application flow and state. We have to understand what our sites are doing before we can understand what they're doing wrong. So the first feature I'm going to cover today is the Elements tab, and we use this for debugging HTML and CSS. It's really easy to open Chrome DevTools. You right-click your page and select Inspect Elements, and you can also use Control or Command Shift and C. So this is how it's done. You right-click, you select Inspect, and Chrome DevTools opens in a part of your window. And you can hover over all of the elements in your page that are shown, and they'll be highlighted on your page. You can also expand them to deep dive deep down into the HTML tree. And you can also double click on these elements as well to edit your HTML. When you select an element, all the styles applied to that element will be shown in the styles, styles pane on the right hand side. And like HTML, you can double click on these values and change them to experiment with different kinds of styles. So here, I can make all the um, text on my site italic just by adding a new property. I can change some of the existing properties, so I can change the background color, color to pink. You can click on swatches and change the color, change colors using a, a, a color picker. And we can see the changes reflected in our website. So the solar system is now a very fetching shade of pink. One of the things that can be quite difficult when using Chrome DevTools um, is uh, interacting with hover states when you mouse over elements on your page. Um, so to save this faff, you can simulate um, element states by clicking on the false element state button. If you do a lot of work with CSS animations, you can click on the CSS animation button, and you can slow them down to a fraction of the speed so you can see what's going on. So we can see the effects ref are reflected here, and all the CSS animations have slowed right down, making it easier to see. A really fundamental part of building websites um, in the modern era is building websites for different devices, such as tablets and phones. And a useful feature that Chrome DevTools gives you for that is the de device mode. And you can launch it by clicking on the device mode button. And when you do that, you can see that your page has been resized to the kind of size and uh, aspect ratio that you, you see on some devices. And you can change those settings so we can emulate an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 6 or an even an iPad. And as well as emulating those sizes of, of the screen, it also em emulates things like um, uh, user agents, um, the, uh, the kind of uh, DPI that you'd expect on high-resolution screens, um, and much, much more. It also, when you interact with your site using a mouse, um, you also see uh, touch events being emulated too. So the next feature I'm going to talk about is the Network tab. 
and we use this for debugging HTTP requests that your site makes across the network. So this is what it looks like. You can see that a list of all the requests to resources that our site is making listed in a list, as well as useful information such as the HTTP method to request them, the status code um, that, they've, that your respon that response has returned, the type of request, um, uh, so whether it's to a document or to a script or to a star sheet, the total size of the response returned, and the time spent downloading it. There's also a visualization of all these requests. Um, the visualization shows when the request starts, when it ends, and how long it takes. Developers affectionately refer to this as the waterfall because of the cascading nature that requests come in um, as your site loads. You might be able to see that requests, the quest bars are split up into two different bits. The lighter bit on the left is the um, time spent setting up network connections, everything to get requests ready before you actually download data. The darker bit on the right is time spent sending and receiving data across the network. So you can see that quite a lot of time is sent, not actually sending data across the network. The red line is the point that the, uh, the DOM load event is, um, is fired in your scripts. So you can see that's when content is actually finished downloading. There are lots of filters available if you just want to have a look at specific requests in particular. So you can filter by, um, by the resource type that you're requesting, whether it's a script, a star sheet, an image, a font. Um, if, you want to know, um, if you want to know where to filter a um, AJAX requests, you can um, find that in the XHR filter. There's also a filter field there as well. And if you start typing into this, it has an autocomplete function. So if you start toying around and really playing around with um, different things that you put in there, or suggest things that you, can, um, that you can filter by, and you can filter by all sorts of things, by, like the file name, as well as HTTP headers um, that you don't normally get to see. At the bottom, there are some really broad metrics for your site, such as the total, um, far, uh, total size of um, requests downloaded, the time it took for all your, um, all your content to uh, load down, as well as the point at which the DOM content loaded and the load events were actually fired. These can be used to, um, for really um, basic performance benchmarking if you want to start optimizing the performance of your site. Um, another fundamental part of modern web development is developing on devices that have really slow or um, very bad connectivity to the network. So you can use the, um, the throttling feature to throttle down to 3D. I'll just run that again so you can see. So here, I'm clicking on the throttling feature. It has a drop-down of lots of different networks and speeds, so I'm going to select 3G. I'll reload my website and see how, long, how much longer it takes content to come down. So as it's loading, you can see it's taking many, many seconds to come down. And this is a really good way of just doing some really basic testing of your website under non-optimum circumstances. One of my favorite features of the Network tab um, is the Screenshot Capture tool. And you can enable that by clicking on the camera button at the top. And what happens then is that when you reload your page, DevTools will take a screenshot of your site at specific intervals as your page is loading. If you mouse over them, you can see on the timeline the point that they were taken. It's highlighted. And if you double click on them, you can inspect them in detail. And you can use this feature to really optimize the size of the request that you're making and their timing, so you can deliver more meaningful um, content to your users sooner. So the next feature I'm going to talk about is the, is the Sources tab. And this, we use this for debugging scripts. If you've 
Um, debug scripts before you might have um, come into contact with the console.log function. And that really was where I started doing it. In fact, if you've been developing as long as I have, you might remember debugging with the alert keyword, which isn't really very um, that useful at all. But that's kind of a pain, because every time that you want to change what you're debugging, you have to go back into your file and reload your site. So next time you do this, try instead using the debug keyword. And what this will do is it will pause your script so you can interact with it in the middle of what it's doing. So some of the things that you can do with this that you can't do with console.log is that you can see all of the variables in your, app, in your script. Um, so you can see what this is. You can see global variables. Um, you can actually change their values by double-clicking on, on the values and changing them, allowing you to experiment with your scripts while they're running. And you can also expand them so you can look into specific properties. There's also the call stack, which is a list of functions that are currently being called. So our script here is paused in a function called update frame which was in turn called, called by a function called onScroll. And you can click on these functions and inspect the variables when they were called as well. There's also a watch expression, the watch expressions pane, which allows you to put in arbitrary lines of JavaScript so you can keep an eye on really important variables that you're really interested in you, that you think are creating bugs. You can also call functions in there, such as jQuery, so you can keep an eye on um, what your DOM is doing if you want to. It's there for anything that you want. And these will be re-evaluated every time your script is paused, allowing you to see how those values change. Finally, there's the execution controls at the top. These allow you to step through your script line by line so you can see how it's doing stuff. So let's take a look at how they work. The first one is the resumed script execution button. And I've told you how to pause your script, but I haven't told you how to restart it. So you use this one to restart it. And what that will do is it will restart your script until it gets to the next debugger keyword or the next breakpoint where your script will pause again. These breakpoints on the left you can create them by right-clicking the line gutter. They work just the same as a debugger keyword. When your script gets to one of these lines, DevTools will pause your script so you can look at what it's doing. So when your script is paused and you use the resume script execution button, your script will resume until it gets to the next breakpoint. You can right-click breakpoints, and you can set conditions for them to pause. So if you're debugging a part of your script that is executed very quickly or very often, then you can set a um, condition, and they'll only pause when that is true. So in this case, this breakpoint will only pause when status is published. Next to these controls is a step over next function control. And what that will do is it will tell DevTools to skim over any function calls that you're making and go to the immediate next line. It's important to understand that the functions are still evaluated. They're still running the code inside there, but you're telling DevTools that you want to skim over that, you're not interested in seeing it, and you want to pause on the next line. The step into next function control does exactly the opposite. It allows you to tell DevTools that you want to go, you want to step into that function, you want to follow your script into that function. So here I'm calling the get function, and if I use the step into next function, it will pause on the very first line of that function. If we were to pause back on the line later on, we can, after we've been through that function, if we use the button, if we use the control again, it would next step into the save function. And it will do that for each function called. The step out of current function control will pause your script at the line that it was called after that function has been run. So if we use it here in the save function, it will pause back at the point that it was called. Um, 
some people when they're developing or when they're testing um, their scripts or their sites in general like to write JavaScripts that help them do things such as fill out a uh, registration form. And we have a really long registration form on our website. So I've written a script that will fill out these forms for me. And you can put it in the snippets tab, which is um, in the sources panel. And you can save these so that when you come back to DevTools later on, even after cr closing Chrome, they'll still be there waiting for you. Um, you can quick open um, files as well by hitting Command and P. You start typing in a file name, and Chrome will do its best to find the file that it thinks matches your request. So this is a script that is on the production website. It's been minified, and it's really difficult to read. So I'm going to click on the format, pe uh, format button, the curly brackets at the bottom. And Chrome will do its best to insert some, break point, uh, some um, line breaks to make it easier to read. So if you want to find out more about a couple more features, um, there's black boxing. So quite often, we're only interested in stepping through our own, our own code. We're not really interested in stepping through jQuery or Angular, for instance. So um, black boxing allows you to ignore some files in your site. Workspaces is a really neat um, feature that allows you to save changes in, that you make to files in DevTools to your local file system on your computer, which will allow you to use DevTools as a text editor. The final feature that I'm going to talk about um, is, the, um, is the timeline. And we use this for profiling our, uh, the performance of our websites really broadly. So one of the things that it's really good for is debugging problems, with an, uh, debugging problems with frame rate when there's lots of animation going on in your, in your site. So this is my old website. There's quite a lot of um, uh, animation going on when I'm scrolling, and I've noticed that the frame rate has really suffered. So I'm going to go into the timeline. I'm going to hit record, interact with, uh, with my website, and we can see that DevTools has gathered quite a lot of data and given us some results. So let's look at what they, what they mean. The frames view at the top is a bar chart every frame of animation while the profiler was running. And each bar corresponds to a single frame of animation. And the taller it is, the longer it is taken to render. There's two lines as well running um, horizontally through all of these. I'll highlight them so you can see them. These are your budgets for rendering at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. If your bars are exceeding this, you know that you're breaking these budgets and your site is rendering slowly and you've got a bad frame rate. There's also a list of all the events that's going on um, while, our, while our page is animating as well. In particular, you can see that I've expanded some scripting events that's going on. You can see that lines of my script that are being executed. Um, in particular, there's a lot going on inside my um, on-scroll event, which I expected. So if I want to try and debug this, I might try and remove these, script, these lines of script to see if it, if it makes a difference to the frame rate. So I've gone away and I've done that. I'm going to run the profile again. I'm going to hit record, interact with my website. And we can see that the frame rate has vastly improved and all those bars are safely underneath my budget for rendering at 60 frames per second. You can also see that all of those scripting events have gone as well. So um, a couple of other features that you might want to look into. If you do a lot of, um, if, if you want to look in greater detail at the animation and the rendering on your page, the paint profiler allows you to uh, look at that in detail. And the frame viewer will allow you to see each individual line of CSS animations if you use those. It will allow you to see outlines of your content, even stuff that's hidden, which can be really useful 
for debugging stuff that you can't often see. Um, other dev tools are available as well. Oh, no, that's the next slide. Um, if you do a lot of um, uh, development with um, Angular, Ember, or React, um, then you can get plugins to help you debug applications that are written with those to allow you to look inside their state. And the Breakpoint is a great podcast that um, was created by Adi Osmani and Paul Irish at Google. It's a bit old now. It's sort of like two or three years old. Um, but it covers a lot of the fundamentals that I've mentioned in my talk in much greater detail. And there's hours of content there for you to look at. Also, other dev tools are available. Firefox, in particular, has very mature dev tools um, of its own, as well as Firebug, which has been around for forever now, I think. Um, Internet Explorer, particularly since um, versions 9, 10, 11, and Edge, also has been vastly improving their, de um, their developer tools, so definitely check those out. You might also not know that you can use Chrome to debug websites that are running on actual Android devices just as well as you can with um, the desktop browser. And you can use Safari to do the same with the iPhone. So if you do a lot of mobile development, definitely debug your, uh, your sites running on actual devices. So in summary, we use the Elements tab for debugging HTML and CSS. We use the Network tab for debugging HTTP requests across the network. We use the Sources tab for debugging application flow and state in your scripts. And we use the Timeline for debugging performance broadly across your site. And I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of my heroes. This is Gene Kranz. He was the Apollo flight director for Apollo 11 and Apollo 13. And this quote was taken from the Apollo 13 logs about 20 minutes after the accident. Everyone keep cool. Let's solve the problem and not make it any worse by guessing. And this is how I feel about learning how to use developer tools of all types as much as I can. And I feel that looking inside your sites, looking inside your applications to figure out what they're actually doing can make a real difference to how you feel and, and your competency as a developer. So thank you very much. My slides are available online at that address. All the videos, because there's lots of videos, are also available at the address below. And you can find me on Katie underscore Fen on Twitter. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Katie. Uh, we've got 10 minutes now for some questions. So can you have some hands up if you'd like to ask a question? OK, we've got a hand up over here on the left. Hi there. Could you uh, tell us a little bit more about those watch expressions, the arbitrary code that you can inject? Did you say that they could, uh, they would be executed every time the script was paused? Yeah. So every time, every time you resume your script and it's it's paused, the JavaScript code within each watch expression. In fact, I'll find the slide so you can see. Um, will be rerun. So if you've got, let's see, script, script, script. script. Networks. Not that one. There we go. I think it's this one. Yeah. So you can see that I've got some arbitrary lines of um, JavaScript in there. We've got um, a call to one of the global window properties. And also, I'm, I've got a line of jQuery in there to keep an eye on um, the value inside one of my HTML elements. And you can see that it's actually my name in there at the moment. But if my script has changed that, if it's changed um, uh, after I pause it, those lines of JavaScript will be rerunning. You can see the values change. So the most important things that you find um, as you're being a super sleuth going through your code, if, if you identify things that are really important that you think might be causing a bug, you put them in there. And it's the easiest place to see them. 
um, functions will be rerun, you'll just get the result. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Have we got any more questions? Over here on the right. Hiya. Um, I was just wondering if you had any tips on inspecting uh, canvas elements. Um, I know that I've, I've just recently switched from uh, using Firefox for building to Chrome, and I haven't found um, a good extension or plugin or way of doing it by default in Chrome tools. I've not done, done an awful lot of that myself, actually. Um, I've. Uh, I, d I don't want to make something up on stage, so find me afterwards and we can see if we can find something. Sorry, I couldn't answer your question. That's fine. Thank you very much. We've got a hand just here. Thanks for the um, talk, Katie. It's, uh, it's, it's something I started getting into last year was just empowering self rather than just going to a friend and saying, tell me, tell me why you're broke you know, mm -hmm. finding out what it is. Uh, I think I just wanted to add to it that uh, I don't know if you covered some of the CSS stuff in it, but I, I noticed in, I think it's in Chrome DevTools, that you can go in and what you might do is edit CSS on the fly yeah. and see its effects, and then you can now map that to the actual file and just click Save. Yeah. So you can actually write CSS in the browser and it'll save it to the CSS, and that was... I only, I only came across it a couple of months ago, I just thought I'd add that to the conversation. Yeah, so um, the, um, uh, the feature that we're talking about is the workspaces uh, feature. Um, it's really simple, you just um, give Chrome DevTools access to your local file system, and if you're looking at a star sheet in Chrome DevTools and you want to make some changes to it, you can just make those changes, click save, and it will save two files on your local file system. You won't even have to go and look at your text editor. And one thing that's uh, another really useful feature that I think we just touched on um, was the source mapping feature. If you're using um, a CSS preprocessor like SAS, for instance, um, you can, um, uh, Chrome DevTools has the ability, providing that your, your preprocessor and your build step supports it, to map um, changes um, back to the, C, uh, the SCSS source files so you're not looking at post-precessed CSS um, so that you're looking at the code you actually write rather than the stuff that SAS has spit out. Um, so that is really, really useful. We've got a hand just over here on the left in the hat. Hand in the hat. Thanks, Elliot, for the great uh, presentation. You know, maybe this uh, question is a little bit out of the big picture, but uh, I've been having this question for a long time. Uh, do you know if there is exists in the Chrome Dev Tools, uh, like a keyword that we can just type, like a breakpoint, and put it in our code, and then run our web, you know, web website, and that stop in there without go to the I can't quite. Could you repeat your question, but a, a bit louder, a bit closer to the mic? Uh, yes. Uh, well, basically, I was uh, wondering for some time about the, you know, the, if there is a keyword, yeah, and that we can put in our code, like a breakpoint, and then we just go to our website, run it, and then it's a stop right there into the debugging tools. Do you mean, is, is there a, a keyboard that will mm -hmm. allow you to pause stuff? I've never seen you anything never seen like that, I, I think. Um, it's, it's mostly just using the mouse. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the debugger keyword does at least allow you to go into your script and put, put in debugger, mm -hmm. and then whenever that comes up in the script, ta in the script tag, it will pause. Um, but wouldn't it be lovely to have a keyboard that has everything that you want? On it. Mm -hmm. I, I really hope that answered your question. No, it's okay. I just wanted to ask, you know. Okay. It should be cool. Thank you. Okie dokie, we've got a hand just over here. Hiya. 
Um, sometimes when you change stuff in DevTools, and then you want to see how it loads, but you can't refresh, because if you refresh, you lose the changes you made in DevTools. Is there any way in the tools to emulate a refresh without actually refreshing the page? Um, not as far as I know. Um, the um, keyboard shortcuts will uh, work as, um, as you expect them to. So if you hit Command and R, it will free refresh, but that's not what you want. Yeah. Um, so, I suppose um, the workaround would be to attach your files and then save and then refresh. But there's no way sort of within the browser. I don't think there's any way to do that in, the, uh, in Chrome DevTools. Um, okay. A feature that you might want to look into is um, CSS Auto Refresh. Have, have you heard of that before? No. Um, it's, uh, they're, they're, so it's um, a mixture of a Grunt or Gulp plugin as well as um, a, a browser plugin. Whenever you make changes within your local file system, it will detect those and it will stream the changes to your, um, uh, to your site without actually reloading it. Um, if you're building a React website, you can actually go one step further and your code will update while keeping the state of your program intact. So while you're in the middle of your application and you're seeing it at a certain point, you can make changes to your React components and they'll auto reload and without loading, without changing the point that your application is in. Um, and uh, that's, um, uh, that is React component um, uh, auto loading. I can't remember the name of the feature. But there's loads of cool stuff in different dev tools that you can get. Right, okay, cool. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, CSS autoloader, I think. If you Google those terms, you should get to it. If you're throwing gulp and grunt as well, you'll definitely get it. Any more questions? Am I missing a hand? No, I think that's, that's everyone. I've got a quick question for everyone, actually. Can you put your hand up if you're currently using Chrome uh, debug tools, dev tools? All right, it's popular. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, thank you very much, Katie. That was a great talk. Really appreciate that. Thank you.